This is Bishop Gregory Brewer's sermon at the ordination of the Reverend Jose Rodriguez to the priesthood, December 21, 2013, at the Episcopal Church of the Incarnation, Oviedo, Florida. Let us pray together. Lord, thank you that we can gather together today in the name of your Son. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would draw us to him, that you would open our hearts to his presence, open our minds to that which you desire to say. And we say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You know, what we're doing today is, at any rational level, all but ridiculous. Certainly impossible. Because what we're asking God to do is to set aside Jose and to empower Jose in such a peculiar and distinct manner that what happens is that when he stands up, whether it's presiding at the Eucharist, preaching a sermon, blessing, marrying, burying, all of the things that he will be called to do, that what happens is a miracle takes place. That what comes through is not merely Jose. What comes through is Jesus. Amen. Now, who is sufficient for that? Uh, I mean, it left to any of our own devices. I just want to quit and go home. I mean, I, I want you to understand that what we're doing here is nothing short of miraculous because the charge is so impossible outside the movement and the operation of the Spirit of God. Because you see, only the Holy Spirit can come in and work through someone in such a way is that the presenter recedes, not steps forward, but recedes. And that what happens in a way that it can only be described as the alchemy of a miracle, the Holy Spirit comes and moves and draws us to Jesus through the simplest of actions, words expressed in prayer, hands touching someone else and speaking words of blessing. I mean, bread, wine, water. <laughs> it's actually kind of laughable in a way. We're used to it because we expect God to move and do these things. But if you were to sort of walk in off the street and see all of the things that we're doing, even though it's pretty fancy today. The fact of the matter is, there'd be a part of you, if you were at least a materialist, and you'd go, yeah, right. But that's exactly what we're asking for. We're asking for the Holy Spirit to so move that when Jose stands up and gives the blessing, which he will do at the conclusion of the service today, he will not merely be speaking the words that are directed for him to say, but those words will literally be a container, a delivery vessel, so that through them, the Holy Spirit moves. They're just words. But remember, it was through a word that creation came into being. That in God's economy, they're never merely words. After all, who is Jesus but the word made flesh? And in a very similar fashion, there is an incarnation that happens so that what comes through is Jesus. 
That's certainly the implication for the lessons. The Isaiah lesson, smoke, fear, I'm undone, I've touched your lips. God doing something in Isaiah that Isaiah could have never have done for himself. And then the Annie gets up the little gets up when we get to Jesus saying, Why would we do this at an ordination? I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who comes to me will never thirst. Because we do that, because we have the audacity to believe that the people whom God has chosen and set aside, that when they begin, in essence, to deliver what Jesus gives them, we're fed. We actually experience the slaking of our thirst. Is there a high price for this? There is a very, very high price for this. Because you are always in this, this tension of knowing that in your own physical capability, your talent, your intellect, whatever level that that might be, how much stamina that you have, how much sleep you got last night, you still stand up and say, God, I don't really feel anything. In fact, part of me, if I had my brothers, I wouldn't even be here. Yeah, there are Sundays when your clergy feel that way. <laughs> and yet, even in that place of fatigue and weariness, we still have the audacity to believe that as Paul writes, we have this treasure. It's a treasure in these earth broken vessels that the power might seem to be from God and not from us. And so contra to what often happens when a leader is tired, often what happens in some situations is that the leader kind of revs up. He gets his adrenaline going. He sort of becomes his own cheerleader, gives himself a pep talk. Oh, you can do this. <laughs> you know? and, and that can get communicated in a way, even in the church service work. Are you glad to be here? Hey, man, I'm really glad to be here. And what he's really doing is trying to psych himself up so that somehow there'll be enough adrenaline in the room that maybe after it's all over, people will feel great, even though he's exhausted and feeling really lousy inside. We don't do that. Because you see, for us, it's exactly the opposite. We know there are times when we're excited to be present. And there are other times when we know we're not. And yet, regardless of how we feel, we still have the audacity, I keep using that word, to believe that when Jesus says, if people come to him, they will never go hungry and they will never be thirsty. And that when we gather in his name, he is here. And that we believe that God uses these orders of ministry to minister to one another and to his people. That Jesus will come and minister whether we feel good or not. Jesus did not say, you are the bread of life. See, if that were true, this would be a different story. And we'd need a lot of adrenaline to get through it. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who comes to me will never be thirsty. Just Friday, yesterday, I'm sitting down with the scripture of my study and I'm reading the commentaries and, and praying about what I should say. And, and I, I don't mind telling you, this has been an extraordinarily demanding week. And I was pretty wound up. So I had a very hard time sort of settling in and relaxing and actually reading the scripture and meditating on and trying to get quiet inside. And I have to be, I wasn't doing a very good job of it, to be honest. But as I got to the John reading, after reading Isaiah and the Philippian lesson, which we'll get to in just a minute, and I, it was as if I heard Jesus say, I am the bread of life, not you. 
And it was like everything inside of me just relaxed. Because it's His ministry. It's His feeding. And He chooses to use those whom He has called and set aside, whether they've had good weeks or bad weeks. And because we believe that in the depths of our souls, and we've seen God move, literally, no matter how we feel, it is on that basis, on His sustainable, unchanging promise, that we can go to the Philippian re reading and say, yeah, we can rejoice. No matter what. Remember, Paul's writing that from a jail cell. Because God will choose to minister to His people. All that the Father given me has come to, will come to me. In other words, there's this wonderful sovereign promise that God is carrying out His purposes. My job is to step into it as best I can. Sometimes I feel great, sometimes I don't. don't. But Jesus ministers regardless. Because His purpose will be carried out. And all that the Father given me has come to me. He's going to bring them in. All I have to do is just say, here we go. Yes, Lord. And He does it. So, yeah, it is impossible. And that's what God loves to do, is the impossible. To operate through broken vessels in a way that is nothing short of miraculous. So that he is the one who is clearly seen as the one who is operating. It's not about being a cheerleader. It's not about getting your adrenaline going. It's not having a, the right joke. It's not about your good people's. It's just saying, God, all I can do is be your vessel because that's what I've been called to be. And you know what? I don't have all the bag of tricks. I just trust you. I just trust you. You. So, Jose, please stand. I charge you as your bishop to the impossible. To the impossible. You cannot create this. You cannot make it happen. It must be the very work of the Holy Spirit flowing in you and through you. It is a walk by faith. Because God will invite you to do things that seem impossibly ridiculous. Where they can only happen if he chooses to provide and to give. And you will be called to step out into that impossibility again and again and again and again. So that even though you never really get over the nervousness of it, you will have a history of seeing God step in and give through you in a way that can only be explained by His glory. And because of that, that fearsome, wondrous trust, He will pour through you. He will use you. And many will be fed. And many's thirst will be slaked. Because you know in your soul that Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And that, my brother, is priesthood. Amen. Amen. Amen.